looking at that camera right there. Hi, it's Nardwar, the human serviette at... Yeah. Coming up, an interview with Toro... And do do loo do 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 This is Toro Imwa, and you're watching Nardwar's Video Vault at Camp Flogno. Who are you? I'm Chaz. Toro e moi. Toro e moi. Welcome to Camp Flogna. And right off the bat, I'd like to give you a gift right here, a uh, Sherelle cassette. <laughs> you know, I was wondering if he's gonna, you're gonna make, you know, the wow factor happen. And you, yes, okay. Where's this going? What can you tell the people about Sherelle? Yes, back in uh, maybe like 2011, 2010ish. I did a cover of a song called Saturday Love, and uh, that was by this, this lady right here, Sherelle. Beautiful song. And now the cassette. And now I have the cassette, which I didn't have. This is already amazing. <laughs> when did you first hear about Tyler? Tyler, uh, you know, uh, it was in the, the blogosphere days. It was in, uh, back in 2010. Uh, I remember he put it out there on Twitter. He was a Toro fan, and I was very humbled. Now, in your early days, your grandfather played the Wurlitzer. There was a Wurlitzer around? Yeah. Uh, my grandparents had a Wurlitzer piano. Not electric piano, but yeah, it was uh, like my brain's doing the math. Okay, who talked to my grandparents? No, no. Uh, but yeah, they, um, they had a piano, and my uncle now has the Wurlitzer. And you learned the entertainer by heart. I did, yeah. Speaking of piano. I did, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, you got close, close to home. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't a fan of reading the music, the sheet music, and I would just listen to the recording of the Entertainer and just kind of learned it, and I played it by ear for my first recital. And your family also had a karaoke machine. <laughs> yeah, mom. Yes, they did. Yeah. How did that help you? Um. I think, you know, Filipinos, they, they kind of, they have the karaoke in their, in their soul by, by default. So, uh, yeah, I was just spending lots of uh, Friday nights karaoke before uh, I could hang out with friends or stuff. Your mom was in a wedding band? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the Stargazers. Yeah. What did she do? Uh, my mom was singing. So, yeah, they were uh, a, a wedding band from Augusta, Georgia, and they would do covers for people. And, uh, yeah, I would go to their band practices and just do homework. And what about the weddings? I would skip those, yeah. <laughs> Who were the taxi chaps? Oh, my God. Okay, I knew it. I was like, he's going to... he's gonna. Taxi chaps were my first band back in um, high school, my freshman year uh, band. And it was like this at the drive-in mixed with Weezer and Ska. It's just, just kind of everything we were into. Now that I think about it, it kind of sounds like, you know, what 100 Gex are doing or something. <laughs> I think it's amazing. You covered the specials. Didn't you cover the specials? I did, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what song that was. Uh, probably something like, um, where'd you get that blank expression? Probably blank expression. Now, Patrick and Dylan from your past, they have caught up with you, deja vu. Deja vu. Could you explain a bit about that. Uh, yeah, those are my homeboys from back uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. We were in a band called The Heist and the Accomplice together. And um, yeah, basically uh, that was the project I was working on until Taurus sort of took off. What was it like working at Cartridge World? <laughs> awesome. I mean, I need the kids to hear this because, yeah, um, I did a range of jobs. But yeah, Cartridge World was interesting. You know, it was like, I would go there after my classes, I think it was college, and um, yeah, go refill ink cartridges by hand with syringes, and like, yeah, it was very much just a boring job. No offense, but it was a job. What was it like distributing your early demos? Man, I would hand out CDRs like it was my job 
at all the shows that came through South Carolina, North Carolina, Atlanta, um, like straight up, like at the outside of Cat's Cradle, I just like it was a grizzly bear show even like just giving them out. Just I would burn like a hundred or fifty CDs before to go into a show, and and people would respond. Like um, the guys in the band and Grizzly Bear and stuff, they 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 were a fan of some of the CDs and kept in touch. The choir quit. Awesome. Choir Quit is another, that was the first band I ever recorded. Uh, What's that like? The pressure. Recording another band, not yourself. Yeah, I mean, we were all in college and we did it in a, in a bedroom in our house. But uh, yeah, it was the first time I got to sort of play producer slash engineer and not just noodle around on my, my digital nine track recorder. I have another gift for you. A promo Parliament 12 inch. Oh, cool. Nice. Doing do that. Nice. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. And you have a song called Do the Stuff. Yeah. I do have a song called Do the Stuff. That's really old. It's kind of like, you know, surfery sounding. What gives you about Parliament? Do that stuff. Not for sale. I mean, I love George Clinton. Um, this is amazing. Yeah. Synth Gods. Because Logic mentions you on Dad Bods. Yeah. <laughs> and you ended up producing him. Yeah. I, we did this one track together. Um, just gonna say, I didn't use any samples. I don't know, maybe he threw something in there. I think he might have thrown some extra sauce in there. There's also DJ Dadbod? Okay, DJ Dadbod represents San Francisco. Yeah, the connection. Yeah, okay, I like that. That's, what is he involved with, like some sort of food? Yeah, he has a bar in uh, San Francisco called Bar Part Time. I mean, it's great wine for those kids out there that like natural wine. For the heist, what sort of gigs did you play? Like on Hardin Street, the St. Pat's Day Festival. I'm like triangulating like who you talk to. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I mean, growing up, there's not much to do in South Carolina but skateboard. So it's kind of, um, what about, yeah, Hardin Street was just one of the streets that had a hill. It was great to bomb. January 20th, 2009, New Brooklyn Tavern. Okay. With Austin Crane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Austin's the homie. Do you remember that gig? Very early in your career at Toro. 2009. January, January, okay, that was right when, right when Toro took off for real, for real. So that, was that one of the first ones? Yeah. I think that was the first show. It was. Nice research. Well, you were Toro Ima. We have to know. Yeah. What do you remember about the first gig, though? Like, what was it like playing that? Was there any sort of butterflies, or were you nervous? Or Tons of but butterflies. I, I remember it was, like, one of the first times I really played solo without a band or my band. And, um, yeah, the crowd was there for it, though. I mean, it was New Brooklyn Tavern, and it had, like, 200. It was, like, a 200 cap, and everyone was in, just dancing and sweaty. It was, like, Indie Sleaze era. Like, everybody had their white belts and girl jeans, and it was nice. Because I noticed, quote, I saw this band, I think you dig, but the record they got, got bad reviews. Reviews you didn't mention the band. <laughs> that was me. I was talking about my... Oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought maybe you were thinking of somebody else. Uh, it's basically, yeah, I was just sort of critiquing myself on, um, you know, this uh, rating system that we have for music. And how you can go see a band, even though they have... They've had a bad review, and um, it can still blow your socks off. And I have another gift for you, Toro et moi. It's from North Carolina, <laughs> but it's actually a record that you can possibly sample. Okay. I'm the friendliest land. The friendliest land. I like that. One-sided. Let's go. So my newest EP is one-sided, and we just etched all the lyrics on the back. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll etch into the back. What's really interesting about this record is I think they were cheap making it. If you listen, you can actually hear another band underneath it. Hilarious. Yeah, you know, record labels, you know, they gotta, gotta save that money. But from 1974, the Rhodes Brothers, North Carolina, the friendliest land. I think it'll be great sample, like this at the beginning. That's a good idea. I like this. I like where this is going. What do you think about the North Carolina, South Carolina divide? I, like giving somebody from South Carolina a North Carolina record. Like, I, you know, I don't want to offend you or anything, but this, you know, it's not your it's okay. state. It's okay. You know, a lot of people don't get it, but it is low-key a trigger point for a lot of Carolinians to, to get the wrong, you know, location. But it's okay. I love it. We're all Carolinians.
So speaking of production, I have another record for you, another gift for you, right here, a producer record. It's called The Producer. Really cool. And if you turn it over, check out the track listing. Intriguing. Rhythmic contemporary. Cool. This is like library music. Love it. So it's some instrumental tracks, some vocals, possibly to give you inspiration for the drums. Right here. What do you think about producer records? You know, this is like, look what volume this is. Yeah. <laughs> you are um, teaching me some new stuff right now because, you know, I know about KPM and stuff like that. But the producer records, I'm not sure about this. I don't know if I've ever heard of this. Thank you. I think you probably have heard some of the samples really? or some of the drums. They're probably like in folders that people sample from. Like, But the originals come from here. Lovely. I, um, I do love to sample vinyl, and I, I have a vinyl player. Uh, yeah, that's a gift for you. Thank you so much. No problem. What's the importance of clipping? Clipping. Speaking of recording, clipping. Oh, okay. you no, know, in the red. Yeah, yeah. I mean, depends on what you're going for. Like this interview. Or, <laughs> <laughs> Babu. Ah, no. Um, like, what do you think? I've like the windsock. That's a you... great windsock. Is this? It fits. Yeah, yeah, I paid extra for that. Guitar Center. Um, I think it was eBay. Okay, yeah. eBay's got the best ones. But I would say clipping, you don't want that. It's bad. It's like, you know, you could make it distorted later, but you can't take it away if you're clipping. So, so my kids out there recording on the computers, just don't clip. Try to stay away from the red and then just make it red with a distortion plug-in or whatever. So how low can I record this interview? Like how much can I bring it up? Because how low is too low? That's a, that's a question for Pat Jones, my engineer. <laughs> Babu, <laughs> star music. Star music, that's where I took guitar lessons for the first time. I like started on classical guitar and then I told my teacher I wanted to just go to electric and he taught me how to play Blink-182 and stuff. <laughs> what about Rhodes? You got a Rhodes in Tennessee? I did get a Rhodes out in Tennessee in Knoxville. Dang, you must have talked to my wife. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a Rhodes in Knoxville and um, it's now living at my keyboardist house. What do you think about that pedal that I gave Tyler, the creator, for the piano? That's a really good gift. Yeah, I was low-key jealous. Kiss your little face. Just kiss your little... Mwah, yeah. uh, <laughs> you on some... Now we're on some type of time. But that's a gift for you. For, thank you. For What do you... Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm a fan of effects on keys, so it's something I would use. You love the xylophone, don't you? I mean, I don't have one, but yeah. Roy Ayers. <laughs> Caribou, Manitoba. Heck yeah. What has Caribou told you about Canada? Uh, Dan Snaith, uh, he took us on our first journey throughout Canada, all the way up to Saskatoon and everything in between. Um, but yeah, he's he's a mentor slash like big brother figure. My second U.S. tour was with Caribou, and they really taught us everything from being, you know, uh strategically frugal in some areas to giving the crowd what they want to being a family man everything they listen to caribou and winding up your tour i have another gift for you here a joe baton compilation wow. who you cover thank you this is really cool yeah joe baton he's a great guy he lives in new york city i covered his track uh ordinary guy ordinary guy and here we have oh. Oh, nice, man. Ordinary guy closing out the B-side. He's, uh, again, he's a brother figure, big brother figure. He's black and Filipino as well. And I covered his song sort of as a rite of passage, and he was down to let me release it. And you've met him? I met him. We had dinner at a Philippine restaurant. It was tight. And this is the sound of Spanish Harlem. Classic. Some older Joe Baton, right? Oh, yeah. This is like really like young Baton. Amazing. Like, I love when there's history with some of the records you get. But the great thing about Joe Baton is he's still making music. And I have another gift for you, Toro. Some brand new Joe Baton. This is really cool, too, actually. I, he's still out there doing stuff. A double is. 45. Young people, take note. Like, this man is like, I swear he's probably in his 80s. Sorry, Joe, if you're not. But, yeah, I mean, like, keep releasing music. Don't stop. Just all, basically just keep releasing. Just don't stop. He's the man. He really is. I love your stuff that you recently had, The Listening Party. What can I say about The Listening Party? Joe Kappa. Yeah, Joe Kappa's the man. Um, he's probably one of the up-and-coming animators, illustrators, writer, 
of our time right now. And I think he's, can I cuss? So you made like a listening party. Explain the video. I love that. Yeah, I told Joe, I was like, hey, man, I just want to make a video that sort of just pokes fun at music listeners and make jokes that we know that music listeners get because we're our own, we're our own club, music people, you know? Interesting puppets. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's puppets and like giant like paper mache heads that he puts on people. And um, yeah, the drums totally sound like Tame Impala. So Toro, right now you're about to go on very shortly at Camp Flogna. What can you say about Camp Flogna just in general, like the vibe hanging out here? This is very, very chill. I like this festival a lot. Um, it's all my favorite people, all my favorite artists. Um, honestly, just like knowing Tyler for over 10 years now, seeing how he's taken this festival and his brand and, and music to the world, um, world stage, it's like really respectable and uh, it's still got the playfulness that, um, yeah, we all love. How does it differ from other fests? Because you've played a lot of fests. Yeah, I mean, or I should say, not many carnivals have you played? <laughs> no, not a lot of carnivals. A couple circuses. Really? What was that like? No, I have not played a circus. Okay. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, the festival scene is, it's interesting. Sometimes, you know, they'll, you'll just be on a bill or in a little portable neighborhood uh, with people you don't really know or whatever. But um, compared to other festivals, this one is actually like, yeah, it, 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 it's aware of what people actually like. It's like, it's got the underground stuff, the radio stuff and everything in between. And it's really... In my opinion, I think it's like really doing LA the right way. Anything else to add, Toro y moi? Um, thank you everybody for the love. Yeah. Why should people care about Toro y moi? Why should people care? Uh, you know, I'm a suburban kid from South Carolina. I went to school for graphic design. Wasn't sure what I was going to do. And um, ended up jumping off that ledge and just pursuing music full time. And I just want y'all to know it's possible. You can do whatever you want, really. Um, yeah, just uh, schedule your time. But yeah, you don't have to know about me or care about me. It's okay. I, I don't put anything on my Instagram as often as I should. But I don't know. The internet's kind of funny. Thanks so much, Tori Ma. Keep on rocking in the free world. And do, do, do. Do-do. <laughs>